CVE 2022-30190 is a vulnerability. And it's not like other vulnerabilities, but it is kind of like other vulnerabilities. And with that, I want to start this video off by just sort of tempering expectations. I don't want to be spreading any fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or doom and gloom, or any alarmist kind of, hey, messaging. I just want to bring this to your attention, and I want to give it the gentle uh, nudge in that, hey, it's another vulnerability. It's another fire drill, and take that for what it is. Uh, you know, do your response, do everything that you tend to do, but please don't go sounding the alarm, firing up the bells and whistles, and making a big stink out of this, unless you feel that's appropriate for your risk and threat model. It is currently 11.30 at night Eastern Time on May 30th, 2022, and for the last 24 hours or so, I've been tracking this thing and trying to stay with it, be on the front lines, be in the trenches, and I'm pretty happy I waited until now to go ahead and record something because just recently, as a few hours ago, Microsoft has released a security update and acknowledged that this will be identified with CVE 2022-30190. So first, let's start with a little bit of backstory on how this caught wind within the security community. On May 27th, there was a tweet shared by NaoSec, or N-A-O underscore S-E-C, a security researcher that was looking around in VirusTotal for different attack vectors targeting CVE 2021-40444, which was a previous vulnerability that would take advantage of the MHTML protocol shenanigans stuff targeting Microsoft Office documents that could be used for initial access or remote code execution with just a simple office document. What we're talking about now is a separate vulnerability, but very, very similar. And anyway, this individual found some interesting document that was using an external reference inside of the Microsoft Word document that would call out to an external HTML file, and that HTML file would stage and load code to be ran sort of through the MSDT protocol or file schema handler. Now, MSDT is the Microsoft Support Diagnostics tool. Using special parameters or some specific syntax and semantics to be able to invoke PowerShell code through this was novel and interesting and weird and not something that I think the security community has been tracking before. So within a few days, other security researchers like Kevin Beaumont, Jake Williams, amongst others, started to share this information and kind of suggest to others, hey, we should be looking at this because this can be pretty dangerous. It's sort of a rerun of CVE 2021-40444, but very different in that, hey, it's not patched right now. This is being exploited in the wild. Granted, I think I'm only aware of, hey, that one malicious sample, but it's not too far-fetched to think that we're going to see a lot of this maybe in the coming days. All this attack vector really needs to be exploited is one, the user downloads a malicious office document, and two, they open it or just even navigate to it depending on how it's staged and prepared. You open up the Microsoft Word document as you might any other document. If you download it from the internet, you will have to enable editing because protected view will kind of get in the way. But this doesn't contain macros. It's not a macro-enabled malicious document. There are no macros. All it is is an external reference that calls out to another location, pulls code to run, and then executes it. That is remote code execution offering initial access under the privileges and permissions of the user account that invoked Microsoft Word. While this could be a low privilege, hey, Joe Schmo user, that opens the door for threat actors to then do lateral movement or install persistence to maintain access or escalate privileges so that they can become the administrator, super user, or root account. It is code execution, so ultimately the threat actor can do whatever they want. But to pull back the curtain just a little bit more, apparently, back in April of 2022, there was a user known as Crazy Man under the Shadow Chasers group that had reported to Microsoft this exact threat. Like, literally, you can see in the screenshot the same sort of syntax and code used to trigger this exploit. A Microsoft representative responded and sort of dismissed this as, hey, I don't see this as a security issue. Usually, MSDT, or that Microsoft Support Diagnostics tool, would prompt open requesting a pass key, and it would not detonate or execute code. However, what I think the misunderstanding here was, and this is just a guess, this is just John's speculation, was that yes, 
MSDT would normally prompt for a passkey, but in the given scenario that the HTML file that was retrieved was over 4,096 bytes, there was some, hey, cool, crazy shenanigans within the internal functions. I think it's rendering or processing HTML. There's a very cool deep dive that another security researcher has done showcasing that hardcore reverse engineering to find that buffer size of 4,096. But given a file size equal to or greater than that 4,096 bytes length, it would execute code. In the official security update released from Microsoft, they do include in the acknowledgement section credit to that individual crazy man from the Shadow Chasers group for the initial report of this. With that said, we can clue in that there was at least some exploitation dating back to April out in the wild. Now let's chat about the exploit. So I have recreated a proof of concept to be able to demonstrate the exploitation, and I think a few other researchers have just as well. I know Cass Van Kooten has a very cool proof of concept. Uh, Kev the Hermit, I think, has shared some, and a couple others are out on the internet. But I will chat about how I put this together, because ultimately, after I was able to receive the original malicious sample from what NowSec had shared on Twitter, I could dig through the internals of the Microsoft Word document and see inside the document.xml.rels file that there was an external reference reached out to at originally xmlformats.com with a big long endpoint eventually reaching an HTML file with an exclamation point included at the end. The original tweet shared by NowSec included a link to the online cloud service any.run, which is a sandbox environment that'll do very cool dynamic analysis, letting you know what files were dropped or what processes were spawned or what HTTP and network communications were sent out. With that, I could see what the xmlformats.com website originally hosted at that HTML endpoint. Now, the xmlformats.com website is offline, and that thread is not live. But the HTML file that it was retrieving was really interesting. It included a script tag to be able to run client-side scripting languages, and within that was a ton of commented A characters, which seemed kind of weird to me. It seemed pretty useless to begin with. Scrolling down, you could see the original, okay, invoking payload, setting window.location.href to be msmsdt and parameters and arguments necessary, eventually staging PowerShell code to be executed, encoded in base64. I could decode the base64 and get a little bit of a better understanding of what was really happening here. It looked like, hey, maybe this file was originally delivered through email as a RAR file or a compressed archive file, and then they would stage command prompt windows, hidden and not shown, to be able to loop through this archive, find another base64 string that looks like, okay, the beginning of a cab file or a Microsoft cabinet file, again, for tucked away and compressed files. It would expand that out eventually to create and invoke an rgb.exe. At the moment, I don't know what that rgb.exe executable did, what it is, what it could have done, and I don't believe anyone else knows either. But considering this is remote code execution, again, the adversary could do whatever they want. That could be a remote access trojan, that could be a cryptocurrency miner, that could be ransomware. Granted, they likely need to escalate privileges, but you get the idea. Anyway, back to recreating the exploit, I could of course change and swap out that base64 data for commands that I would want to run. And I could maybe modify, again, that document XML rels file within the Word document to be able to reach an internal local IP address that I could set up in a sandbox environment. And that is exactly what I did. I could recreate that Microsoft Word attack vector with a local Windows 10 VM, also worked in a Windows 11 VM with the version of Office that I was using, and Kali Linux as my attacker machine. I could see it would reach out to my HTTP server, hosting this HTML file, and then starting code that I would want to run, like popping open a calculator application, or notepad, or any other proof of concept. Saving the file as an RTF file or rich text format, I could even invoke this with just the preview pane or preview mode in Windows Explorer. That changes the severity of this thing from, oh, a, a, a one-click trigger to even a zero-click trigger, much like CVE 2021-40444, in that the user just has to navigate to this file and it could run code. 
So I bundled this up into a Python script that would stage and build out all the steps necessary for this, spit out a crafted Microsoft Word document, and then host and stage HTML as you would like for any command of your choosing. For some of the flashy Hollywood hacking, cool fireworks and demonstrations, I also added the ability to just have the target download a netcat binary so we could send a reverse shell back to the attacker machine and you can fully compromise the device, at least again in those user privileges. Bear in mind, Netcat would trigger antivirus if Windows Defender were on the box or any other AV that might get in the way. So, hey, your mileage may vary totally just for Hollywood hacks and demonstrations. If you have any interest, you can find the link to the repository and showcasing all that code in the description of this video. But that brings me to an interesting point in that antivirus could be detecting this or should be detecting this, right? So the original malicious sample that was showcased by NowSec is caught by Windows Defender Free Edition, or was caught from my last understanding, with the tag CVE-2017-0199. Now, that is unlikely to be the actual threat detection because this is not from 2017. And that was only on that sample. Any of the recreated attempts that I had put together with my proof of concept would not detect this MSDT tradecraft and technique. In Microsoft's latest article and blog post on this, they are suggesting that it will now be detected as Mesdetti, I think is how you could say that, and a Mesdetti launcher. And while it is fine and dandy that Microsoft has now shared this formal and official security update so we can better talk about this and address the vulnerability and attack vector as now identified, CVE-2022-30190, but there is still no patch available, at least at the time of me recording this video. There are a lot of conversations about mitigation efforts and what sort of workarounds you might be able to use to at least limit this attack, and so far we know of, okay, totally disabling that MSDT file handler. You can do this in the registry, you can just hate nerf, however that might be handled and opened, but that might have some potential maybe unexpected consequences, and I don't know if that's what I would always advocate for people. Again, that's totally what you have to assess with your own risk and threat model, but it is one option. Another known mitigation effort is using some of the attack surface reduction rules. Uh, there is one that will allow you to block all child processes spawned from Microsoft Office applications, and that, from what I understand, is effective and will neuter this. When it comes to detection efforts, you have to be looking at behavior, right? WinWord, WinWord.exe, Microsoft Word, should maybe not usually be spawning an msdt.exe child process. And from that, you'll see sdiag nhost.exe, and following that, more child processes for the original command executed. You can see this in some screenshots that I showcase where Notepad, as an example, is just fired underneath. There are Sigma rules available, and I'll include those in the description. There are hunting rules available, I believe, for like Microsoft Defender for Endpoint if you're paying the big bucks for that. And of course, credit where credit is due, Florian Roth and his team, Cerberus, DeadSec, Will Dorman, Nasbench, Didier Stevens, Malware Hunter team, and tons of other incredible people, forgive me if I'm not getting your name in here, have been sharing great threat intelligence detection efforts and everything that we need so that the community can stay in this. It is a team sport. If you are interested in what I have been up to, I have tried to brain dump everything that I can within the Huntress blog post uh, showcasing this, and of course the GitHub repository if you'd like to play around with the proof of concept in a virtual environment, safe sandbox range of your own. And while I totally don't mean to be a shill and just, hey, give some love and kudos to the crew and team over at Huntress, I have to. Uh, I don't know if you've been able to see some of the social tweets, but it is just incredible to work with such a dedicated and phenomenal team. Hey, burning the midnight oil, working around the clock to stay with this thing. Uh, kudos and credit and all the love uh, to the other folks that I'm with over at Huntress. I think that is enough talk, and hopefully this has been at least a digestible crash course in what the heck the CVE-2022-30190 Felina uh, MSDT attack vector thing is. But with my last final words, I do want to offer that gentle reminder. We have not seen a patch released yet at the time of recording, and we are only seeing, I would say, minimal exploitation in the wild with the only original malicious sample that I know of attacking Microsoft Word, and at least using that as its vector. This should be affecting other Office products like Excel and PowerPoint, but I haven't seen a recreated sample or proof of concept with those vectors or vessels. Uh, I would like to be able to play with that, hopefully if I have time. 
But again, this is trivial to recreate and trivial for threat actors to just spray and pray across the internet in spear phishing campaigns and social engineering. All it takes is just that user opening or even navigating to the document. I would expect in the coming days, maybe we might see more exploitation of it. Again, email-based delivery. And this all boils down to education. User awareness, security training, all the boring basic stuff when we say, hey, be careful of spooky, scary emails. But we keep coming back to this, and I think we're going to keep seeing this around for time and time again. I don't know if I'll get another YouTube video out on this, so if you aren't, please track me down on Twitter. Please track me down on LinkedIn. I'll be trying to get messaging out there. And of course, the blog post and Reddit thread that I've been maintaining with the Huntress. So when a patch is available, go patch and keep telling your users, your staff, your clients, your customers, your friends and family and loved ones, careful of those emails uh, and be vigilant as we tend to say. <laughs> This takes a village. This takes everyone playing in concert. Cybersecurity is a team sport. And thank you all so much for listening to me ramble for a little bit. Hope this was helpful.